The regular season begins on March 25th, and you can watch matches on Paramount Plus. And we're doing a preview for every single team, a podcast, and on YouTube. YouTube, excuse me. This is our last team, okay? So if you have missed any of the previews, I promise you, you can go back and you can watch them on YouTube or you can look through our podcast feed, okay? If you don't care about alphabetical order, that's fine. If you're only here for one specific team, hey, I love that too. I'm here for that energy. We're all about that. Check the channel. Check the feed. Lisa, we're back. We got to talk about Washington Spirits. The last one, last team. I promise. We did them all. We talked about every yeah. single team, every player on every team. It was, um, it's been a joy, Sandra. It's been a nice progressive buildup to the regular season. It's around the corner. We get to kick off with um, big games, big matchups to start the regular season. But this is our final team by team preview. Then we get to get into the nitty gritty of the matchups and things that happen. But we get to stay, stay wide angle for now. Wa- looking at the Washington spirit. I mean, this is a team that's had some ups and downs. They've had some some good times, some bad times. I think one of the the good times to come is that they will be playing all their games at Audi field. No more Segra say adios to Segra. I think that's a good thing for fans, for players, for viewers, for broadcasters. Um, Goodbye, Segra. It's, it's a good thing. I think that's a, a good start for Washington spirit for this 2023 season. I'm with you. I think, again, we did these in alphabetical order, just to remind everyone, not in terms of like prediction and finishes and where we think they're going to land. So we're saving Washington spirit because they are the W of, of the league. So let's, let's maybe get into an overview for the team, just a a quick refresher for everyone um, in case you missed any moves or anything like that in the off season. Uh, I think it really started with the technical staff side of things mm-hmm. for this team in their off season. Um, we saw mid season in 2022 with the spirit, they had a coaching change. They terminated head coach, Chris Ward later through investigations has been issued some conditions uh, in terms of if he ever will come on back and coach in the league investigations found that uh, he was, uh, you know, the, the allegations of, of racial, essentially racial profiling was, were, were true. And they said, can't work in the NWSL anymore, pending certain conditions and mid season, they had, they found themselves having to navigate uh, a similar journey that they did in 2021. It's like they went through two consecutive seasons, essentially um, with a, a shakeup in, in coaching uh, for for this team moving forward, uh, they brought in Mark Kirkeran from from Florida State University's club president to navigate the the remainder of uh, to help them navigate the remainder of, of the 2022 season, which was just a struggle. Yeah, for this team really from the get go, uh, making an appearance in the NWSL Challenge Cup final, <clears throat> and then just having like a really just very heavy match loaded kind of schedule to start. And they just never found their footing. And then you add in the controversy with their coach and yep. the very unfortunate incident that they had with a player. And you're just, you're just constantly like treading water. It sort of felt like for this yeah, team. It's so a good way to put it. Treading water. Yeah. In, in terms of their off season, I think, that's where they wanted to start. And we saw that reflected in the move. So they added pieces to, to their technical staff. I mean, Don Scott was a hire that we uh, were really excited about. We were like, wow, they, they brought Don Scott back to the United States. She's in NWSL going to help out with, uh, with the spirit and the uh, technical and, and, and medical side of things. And they also hired Mark Parsons. They needed a new head coach and they brought him back to the NWSL after he had a very brief stint with the Netherlands women's national team, a little bit of a return homecoming, perhaps he was initially with the spirit in their inaugural uh, season in 2023 through 2015, but then was with the thorns from 2015 to 2021, won a bunch of titles during his time with the thorns. Um, But yeah, uh, Moriano uh, Imaizumi was also uh, named as an assistant coach, uh, Someone who has ties to Florida State University spent yeah. a brief had a brief stint with Chicago Red Stars. Now, now with Washington Spirit, so they made these really notable changes across the technical staff, and it sort of set the stage, I think, for us that we wanted to see a little bit more continuity. But in the free agency pool or in the draft, 
And we just didn't really see that from this team in the offseason. We ended up giving them a B for the offseason grade because we just we we just had we were left with way more questions than we had answers for this team moving forward into the 2023 season. And they're coming off an 11th place finish. Nearly, nearly last place with a 310 and nine record. I believe they might have set a record for draws. Yes. No, in 2022, it was tough. And you just, you look at, it's like this, this team almost, they didn't get last place because Gotham existed. Yeah. <laughs> like it's, 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 it's the it truth. Was it's the truth. And, and you talk about uh, only three wins. That's pretty bad going from a team that won the 2021 NWSL championship to then only getting three wins the next year. Yeah. They set a record for most consecutive ties, I believe it was, or yeah. most ties with 10. Um, and that's like probably one of the the worst records you could set. And the worst one being the one that Gotham set most consecutive losses. Um, and Goth- Gotham was last place in the league last year. And and the only reason Washington wasn't there is because Gotham was there. That's, that's exactly it. This was a bad season for Washington last year. They struggled a lot. They had a lot of um, – uh, off season or excuse me, off field things that were happening, which we saw that happen in 2021 as well with their ownership and, and everything that was going on there. But the fact that they could turn it around in 2021 and then in 2022, they really couldn't catch a break. As you said, at best treading water, this team was, um, they couldn't catch a break again. And this time I think the players were just a little bit too exhausted to translate that onto the pitch and they couldn't, they couldn't get it together. I think uh, getting Don Scott pretty great. I, I think getting Mark Parsons back, um, interesting, interesting. I'm going to see how Parsons does this year. I think what he did at Portland was impressive, of course, establishing a culture, a winning culture. Um, I think he has pretty good ability to develop young players. Um, that's one big positive I will give him and in, in this Washington Spirit side as we go through the roster. But other than that, I think it's going to be hard for for Washington to come back from their D grade that we gave them because they really didn't make too many changes in the offseason um, and they lost a lot. And yeah. after a team that only gets three wins – in 2022, you need to make some changes. You need to make some changes. You do. After the season that they had in 2022 and the fact that they're approaching a World Cup year where they're another team that might miss a significant amount of players, yes, they needed to to do something, right? And I, listen, I, I think they did. I think they did. Yes. Did they add players? Yeah, they did. We're going to talk about that. They utilized the draft to – really kind of flesh out the roster, but they also lost a, a pretty key piece in, in, in light of that. Um, in terms of like actual breakout signings for this team, maybe in a similar boat as some other teams, not as big a splash in the, in the free agency period. They did, they did do some re-signings, right? They, they brought mm-hmm. um, Barnhart back. They brought uh, Amber Brooks back, you know, kind of, simple re-signings yeah. players that have been with the team. Hey, we want to retain you and, and we, we, we need you moving forward. So that was smart. Um, the headliner was, was probably the announcement of, of Chloe Ricketts, a midfielder, the youngest player to ever sign an NWSL contract. Um, so that's maybe the headline stealer there in terms of, 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 of off season signings. Perhaps we look at Inez Warena, um, just mm-hmm. under that, the, a veteran uh, in France, formerly played with Olympic Lyon. And so this is someone who can perhaps bring a different level of, of professionalism for what's going to be a very young team. Because this Washington Spirit side navigated their draft the way they needed to navigate it. They needed to add bodies yeah. to this yeah. roster. Depth, 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 depth. They needed it. And they walked out of that draft with with several players and they signed six first year players out out of the draft but they also lost some things within that draft Emily Sonnet was part of a trade with Oral Rain um to to get more picks in this draft uh, they lost players through free agency they do not have Kelly O'Hara anymore signed with Gotham and there's things like injuries unfortunately those things happen in preseason we've seen okay. it year in year out we hate to see it 
but it's a thing that happens. And they recently announced that Anna Helferty is going to be out with a season yeah, ending yeah. injury. So maybe those three detrimental losses for this team moving forward in 2023. They're big. They're massive losses. Despite um, uh, we have listed on our rundown, one, two, three, four, five, in addition to the six. So 11 players that Washington Spirit added to their roster. Um, None of those, I'm going to be honest, are going to change the game. They're not going to come in and just completely flip the script for Washington Spirit. Meanwhile, the players that they lost, Kelly O'Hara, yeah, that's a massive hole in your back line. Massive. Emily Sonnet massive hole in your back line. These are two women's national team caliber players, starting women national team defenders. They were on your team when you won the championship. They're veterans, they're leaders, massive. And then you also lose someone like an Anna Helferty who um, it has, I, I think, the experience of those other two players because she's been in the league for a, num- the, a number of years. She's played a variety of positions as well in this league. And she was such a consistent factor. She was also one of the most athletic players I think I've ever watched play. She's just constantly running up and down the pitch as, as a wingback player, contributing to goal scoring opportunities and crosses, and then also being a, a good defender. Those losses are way bigger than the 13 players that they signed this year. I, I think it, it's like adding a Band-Aid to a bullet hole on this team. And, and that's part of the reason that they got a D from our grading. I, I think when you look at the, the signings that Washington Spirit made, there are definitely some positives amongst this group in terms of adding depth, adding a Chloe Ricketts. But I don't think a Chloe Ricketts is going to make that much of an impact this year. At 15 years old, it's no. hard to come into a league and and start score all the goals and, and take a team from – second to last place to the top of the standings. It's not, that's, it's not going to happen. So mm-hmm. I like the signing for Chloe, Chloe Ricketts. I like that. Um, it's available and it's an option for younger than 18. We, we also need to just look at who her coach is going to be. Mark Parsons is not a stranger to having young players on the team. Yep. He was the coach with the thorns when Olivia Moultrie made the headlines as the then youngest player of all time to sign a contract and was not interested in putting piling too much on to a young player. Yeah. But there was also ready. a pretty stacked roster. So, you know, wanted to, to bring this player along slowly. This was not someone who was cracking week to week to week to week, starting 11s for the Thorns. Um, was a player that was utilized off the bench. Um, and I, I'm looking at Parsons with, with the spirit and there are a lot of young players that are going to, that they're going to roll with in, in uh, yeah. 2023, but that I mean, is, yes, it includes Ricketts, but it also includes these, these multiple yeah. draftees that they just signed it. Six, there's six draftees yeah. that they signed and, uh, the, what was their number, their first pick? How late did it come? Where like 30th something, 25th pick? Like, when, like, they like top pick in the third round all of the picks were were later round picks i think they're right which third round which there are definitely diamonds in the nwsl draft that Mm -hmm. end up falling to the second and third round but to sign all six first year players out of uh the draft that you have is um it's depth it's depth for these players and and for this team um i think Inez uh, Warrena out, out of France and, and formerly with Olympic Lyon, that's going to be a big veteran for this team. But also she's coming from a well into the NWSL. I mean, that's a that's a shift. That's a change. I think yeah. a little bit of consistency with midfielder Marissa Shiva is going to help. This is a player that's been in and out of um, this roster for a number of years, and, and she ends up getting a contract in August of last year, re-signing that contract. That'll add depth to the midfield as well. But uh, – the losses are just bigger than the gains for this Washington yeah. side. And that's why we didn't give them a higher off season score. Yeah. And that's why I'm still concerned for this Washington spirit team yeah. heading into 2023. The defense is, the defense is going to be um, scary. It's going to be an issue. I think it might, it, they might have to be a little Swiss out. cheese. <laughs> um, you know, Sam Staub is a very valuable asset. I think on that's that good. back line right now. And I think the club is also, um, you know, thankful that they were able to negotiate a new contract for someone like an Amber Brooks Massive. Um, out of free agency. You know, Massive. I think there's, there's a certain there's a certain number of players that they're going to really have to rely on when it comes to um, 
you know, their defensive shape, I think, moving forward into into the regular season, you know, no Sonnet, no O'Hara. I mean, we we didn't mention the fact that Karina Rodriguez is with, with Club America. She was uh, a defensive piece uh, at times for them as well. So big depth. We saw a lot of Rodriguez when uh, the internationals were gone and we'll talk yep. about it, but Washington has a lot of internationals that, that head out during the FIFA windows. And Rodriguez was one of those depth pieces last year for them. But the only reason, like, I, I don't want to, be preaching to the choir but the only reason that you have depth players on a team is to get them experience albeit limited experience throughout the year but that way you can build upon them next year and, and losing someone like a Rodriguez hurts this team because no she wasn't a starting caliber player and she didn't contribute yeah. the most minutes last year but she contributed minutes and she was with that team through the lows so then when you put her on and, and you play her alongside people in the midfield like a Sanchez and an Andy Sullivan it gains that player's experience and yeah. that's what this team has lost this and when we're talking when we're talking about depth that depth was something that this team needed to have going into 2023 that just looms larger when you look at a player like Rodriguez who's yes. now gone to a different league entirely mm -hmm. um this was a player that was drafted you know one of those draft picks was maybe going to get some time but had very limited minutes and unfortunately um wanted to get more playing time and is now now in another league so yeah. we'll, we'll for see. her 